Mr. McClintock. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Ray, uh, last month, 180,000 foreign nationals illegally crossed our border. That's a 674 percent increase over last May, nearly a million so far this year. The leaders of Mexico and the Northern Triangle countries all say this is in direct response to the Biden open border policies. I don't think there's any question that's the case. Uh, these policies have produced the largest human trafficking operation since the international slave trade. Can you tell us how many persons on the terrorist watch list have been encountered this year crossing through our southern border? Uh, Congressman, I'm not sure that I have that number, but it may be that we can provide the specifics uh, separately. I do know that our uh, field offices down on the border uh, work very closely with CBP, especially focused on so-called special interest aliens, as well as potential. But I, I, I've watched. Subject. I just don't have the numbers. Groups being here. flagged through straight to transportation uh, uh, hubs. How many persons with criminal records or criminal warrants have been encountered this year crossing our southern border? Again, I don't. I don't have the specific figures, uh, but I know that our field offices down there, both of, all of which I've visited, work very closely with CBP on this issue, and I agree with you that it's a significant security concern. Well, uh, would you think is a more dangerous threat to our nation's security than, say, whether uh, Rudy Giuliani filed the right paperwork for his lobbying firm? <laughs> uh, I really can't discuss any specific individuals' can you at least investigation. Give us the FBI estimate of how many terrorists, criminals, and gang members are among the hundreds of thousands of gotaways that the Border Patrol has been unable to intercept? Again, I'd be happy to see if I can provide specific numbers and information to be helpful to your request uh, separately. So I'm happy to follow up with your staff on well, that. On that point, uh, House Republican Leader Kevin McCarthy sent you a letter in April uh, requesting a briefing on this subject. Uh, will you commit to keeping Mr. McCarthy, in fact, all members of, of this committee, fully informed of it? Uh, I believe we have actually, may have already even provided the, uh, the briefing that you're referring to for Leader McCarthy. And will you provide that for all members of this committee? Again, I'm happy to see what information we can provide to be helpful. Well, I hope you could provide me all the information. Again, I have to see what information we can provide, but yes. Is it true that uh, many of the foreign nationals who are being trafficked across our border often arrive here deeply indebted to the Mexican crime cartels? Certainly, we have seen uh, quite a number of such instances, absolutely. Are those debts collected through indentured servitude to the cartels? In some cases, definitely. Um, you know, we. We are pursuing, we have a number of human trafficking task forces, uh, as well as working on certain task forces with DHS to try to address that issue. Uh, but I, there's no question that the cartel activity on the other side of the border uh, is spilling over in all sorts of ways, and you just put your finger directly on one that is extremely concerning to us all. So we basically, 170 plus years after the 13th Amendment, have slavery burgeoning in this country as a result of these policies. Well, certainly, I, I do consider human trafficking a form of, and I'd like to word, a modern, a modern form of slavery. I mean, it's Indentured almost medieval. It certainly yeah. is. How is yeah. that, you, you, you mentioned uh, out of the country, but how, in this country, how is that enforced? Do the cartels have uh, gang affiliates uh, uh, who uh, extract these, uh, these debts? Well, it, it varies from case to case. Uh, certainly, the cartels have, in different cartels have affiliations with different sorts of gangs here in the United States. Um, there's not just human trafficking from a labor perspective, so, and so this is, this is, but also this sex is a massive uh, organized crime syndicate burgeoning in this country because of these policies. What are you doing about it? So we, we are attacking, we're, it's a team effort, right? Obviously, DHS has, a, has the primary responsibility for the border itself, uh, but we have Safe Streets Task Forces that go after the gang activity. We have um, OSADEF Strike Forces that go after the How many activity. agents and how much money are you uh, directing at this threat? Again, I could see if I could give you specific numbers, but I don't have those off the top of my head. I will tell you, uh, which is sometimes surprising to people that our criminal programs, our traditional criminal programs, which include exactly the kind of thing you're talking about, remain, even to this day, with all the national security threats that, that get so much discussion, remain our biggest um, number of agents, our biggest allocation of resources. And violent crime 
different sorts of violent crime within the criminal program is by far and away the biggest chunk. Thank you. Gentlemen's time has expired. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm a you know, huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated, he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. 
and she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, 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 between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanted to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.